Hello, welcome to FinancialSenseTV.com. My name is Kurt Jackson. I'm an asset protection and lifetime income specialist. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this installment of our ongoing video information on financial topics of the day. This episode looks at why losing money in the market can be so financially devastating and to begin exploring other, safer, maybe better alternatives. You know, we used to believe that the market was the only place to build wealth. But if you look at the last 10 years, you'll see that the circumstances surrounding that belief have changed. Before you finish this video, you will learn at least three of the myths that Wall Street tries to sell you as truths. You know, if you have money in the market, whether it's in your 401k, IRAs, mutual funds, stocks, or the like, chances are very good that you've lost money recently. The last 10 years has been very ugly. From 2000 to 2003, the market was down as much as 46%, and from 2007 through March of 2009, the market was down as much as 59%. The Dow first crossed the 10,000 mark in 99, and as of today, October 28, 2009, we're at about 9,800. Ouch! You know, it's hard to build wealth when the market is down for 10 years. A 2008 doll bar study showed that from 1989 through 2008, the S&P 500 averaged an 8.35% return per year. It's not too bad, right? Well, you know, they also researched what the average investor earned over that time. Individual investors like you and me that are mostly in mutual funds and individual stocks. And over that same time frame, the average Joe earned an average of 1.87%. Yeah, you heard that right, 1.87%. Aha, the first myth uncovered. What we really get in returns doesn't match what Wall Street claims. Do you know why there's such a huge difference? Well, first and foremost, mutual funds make their money from fees and trading costs, which are paid by you. Second, academic studies have shown that mutual fund managers often perform worse than the average person in picking stocks. Many pick so poorly that you'd likely do better flipping a coin to decide whether or not to buy a stock. And lastly, we as investors aren't very financially intelligent. We are masters at buying high and selling low. Think about it. We get in the market, then when it starts to go down, we listen to our advisors or the media, the traditional buy and hold model, so we hold on to our losers until they get beaten down so badly that we decide to finally pull the trigger and sell. Coincidentally, this is about the bottom of the market. So we have successfully sold at the bottom. Then we either sit in a cash position or worse, we cash out our investments, pay any penalties and taxes at that time, reducing our money even more. Next, we sit on the sidelines while the market goes up. We're afraid to get back in, so we wait for it to go higher just to make sure we aren't getting in at the wrong time. Most of the time we wait so long that we're now buying when the market is high. This is not how you build wealth. Okay, that's pretty painful, isn't it? Does that sound like something you may have done in the past? Sorry, but I'm going to make it hurt even a little bit more. Remember the measly 1.87% 20-year average I spoke of earlier? Well, that was the return before you paid fees. Most mutual funds have an annual cost structure of about 1.2% on average. So now we're down, we're down to 1.87% minus 1.2% or 0.67%. Ouch. But wait. Many have a money management fee of about 0.6% every year, whether you're up or down. So what does that whittle our earnings down to? Oh, a 0.07% per year. That's not 7%, that's 0.07%. Numerically, it would look like this. Let's assume you had $50,000 to invest 20 years ago. Earning the index average of 8.35% for 20 years, you would have had $264,076.70. If you had earned the 1.87%, you would have $72,655.70. And at the 0 .07, you'd have $50,704.90. It's a huge difference, don't you think? You know what? That's another myth uncovered. Wall Street would have you believe that costs are only in other financial products, when in reality, their costs may be much higher. So if you put your money in an S&P index fund, before cost, you would have earned 8.35%. Now, in an index fund, the cost structure is much lower. There's no money management. There's not an expensive stock picker to pay. All you really have is administrative costs to process the paperwork since you aren't doing anything active in the account. Now let's say that that was 0.5%, which is probably high. Then you would have earned 7.85% and would have had $239,106.74 instead of the $50,704.90 paying a professional. Do you realize that that's 372% higher by not having the professional? 
Do you ever wonder why your 401k administrator or your advisor or the media never tells you this? Do you think an advisor or the administrator makes much money off a fund that they don't do anything for? You know, the cost of a managed fund is around 1.8% and an unmanaged fund is 0.5%. So how much of that 1.3% is going to the administrator or your advisor? Plus the annual return in the unmanaged fund is 6.48% higher. So if my math is correct here, you would have earned 7.78% more in the unmanaged indexed fund. This is a good place to stop part one of this video to check out part two of the video. Look below here and click on the video down there. Thanks.